I try to stress the fact that this is the only species of trout that is native to Tennessee, that it's, it's part of the Tennessee heritage. It's the fish that our great-great-grandfathers would have been fishing for. There wouldn't have been rainbow trout back then or brown trout to fish for. This was the trout. And I think it's important for even our grandkids to be able to have that opportunity. I don't think it says much about the society if we just let our past and our history just disappear. Who's ready to stock some fish? I'm gonna move up that next ripple. It's really sad to think about us losing the brook trout from an entire system like this. You're on a free-flowing cold water stream. This time of year, we have the beautiful trees all in color, but it's just not the same. You can catch rainbow trout, you can catch brown trout, but you know, at least I know, a part of the ecosystem is not in place. A lot of people think that uh, rainbows and brown trout are naturally occurring fish that they They've always been here and they will always be here, but, but that's not the case in, in Tennessee. The only true native trout to Tennessee would be the Southern Appalachian brook trout. The brook trout was native to not only the small headwater streams, but also to these larger rivers. It's very special. We like to call it the jewel of the Southern Appalachians. Unfortunately, because of activities that occurred back in the early 1900s, uh, devastation logging, road building, and fire, the brook trout was almost eliminated from the Southern Appalachians. And that's the reason why we have rainbow trout here, is once things started to recover, rainbow trout were being reproduced in large numbers in fish hatcheries, and it was very easy to bring those in and introduce them into the streams where the brook trout had existed. These days, the big challenge is that most of the good habitat for brook trout is occupied by rainbow trout. And you can't get the brook trout to displace the rainbows unless you help them out a little bit. So we start evaluating, well, exactly what do we have? Where do we still have these native populations? Where were they originally? How much have we lost? How can we gain it back? In order to ensure their survival, we decided we needed to take some very affirmative action and try to reestablish the brook trout in the streams where they had been. To do this, we have set up a, a hatchery where we could bring the fish in and begin reproducing them in captivity. Hatcheries serve a lot of different functions and being able to conserve a species is an important part of that. We're seeing some really good numbers. The fish are responding well. We're getting lots of eggs. And, and that's the goal. If we can take, you know, 25 pairs of fish and end up with a couple thousand to stock, these streams, it doesn't take much to have a big impact. Most of these, these lands here that would be uh, the home to brook trout are protected by the Forest Service. When they came in and started protecting this land and working to preserve what forest they could and regrow what forest had been cut. Um, and once you started doing that, the land could start recovering. And we've gotten back to these pristine, clean, beautiful waters. These are the headwaters for a lot of people's drinking water. So if we have got these streams clean enough to support the brook trout, then that's a good indication that your water is starting out as clean as it can be.
But I appreciate all of y'all coming out today. It's the third year of the brook trout restoration project on Sycamore Creek. We've got the backcountry horsemen. They worked with us throughout this project. We've got volunteers from Trout Unlimited and some Boy Scout troops. When we go to release the fish, of course, that's a very popular event for us. We get lots of people just coming out because it's, it's really a cool thing to do. And once we get the horses loaded up, we'll head in. We got one more, it'll go on the other horse, but we didn't put it Backcountry horsemen were able to load the fish onto their horses, haul them into the site. All right, y'all ready? We're headed in. And then we have just lots and lots of volunteers who are willing to haul the fish from the packs down to the stream. Who's ready to stock some fish? And spread them out and release them back into the stream. And that's the ultimate goal that not just in Tennessee, but throughout the South, that brook trout are returned to as much of their historic range as possible. They're absolutely gorgeous fish. All these beautiful colors of reds and greens and yellows and browns and golds. This time of year is perfect. Their underbelly matches the foliage, this bright orange with these white and black tips on their fins. And they're such a striking fish. And in this environment, it's hard to beat. They're just a spectacular fish. Really like to fish for brook trout, but oftentimes I find myself, instead of fishing, just watching them. If you put the sneak on, you can oftentimes catch the fish doing their mating rituals where you have the males trying to court the females. And the females have fanned out all of the debris on these gravel where they're going to spawn. Then this courtship takes place between the two fish, swimming alongside each other, and, and it continues the cycle. This is a long, long-term restoration effort to bring the brook trout back. We're hoping there will be to a point where these fish will start repopulating the stream on their own, and then we can start looking at other streams and expanding the brook trout back through its historic range. The ecosystem would benefit from that storing back to nature what, what was originally there.